The Toronto Raptors are one of the hardest teams to evaluate and predict heading into the 2021-22 season. But nonetheless, that's what I'm going to do today in my first season preview. I will be doing a season preview for all 30 teams in the NBA. But today we're going to start with the Toronto Raptors. Of course, Toronto have had significant changes in their roster over the last couple of years, most notably now with the departure of long-term leader of the team, Kyle Lowry. And now going from a season where they spent the entire year in Tampa to now being back in Toronto. Throw that in with Pascal Siakam missing at least the first month of the season. And there are a lot of interesting variables to consider when talking about this Toronto Raptors team for the upcoming season. And so I'm going to start off talking a little bit about their free agency. And then we'll go into there to talk about what they have as a team and where I expect them to be at the end of the season. If you do go on to enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about the Toronto Raptors for the 2021-22 NBA season. As far as free agency goes, we'll start off with who the Toronto Raptors brought in the summer. Uh, and there was a lot of guys coming in and out for the Raptors. They have brought in Goran Drogic, Preston Sachua, Isaac Bonga, uh, Sfimi Kalichuk, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, Ian Birch, Barry Trent, Reggie Perry, Sam Decker, and Ismail Wainwright. Uh, not all of those guys will necessarily make the team. Uh, Reggie Perry, Ismail Wainwright, Sam Decker, Isaac Bonga are not locks to be on the team. Uh, multiple of them will make it, uh, but I would expect at least one of those guys to not make the team. Uh, and then of course, Scotty Barnes, Delano Banton, and David Johnson were all selected in the draft. Uh, Scotty Barnes is the only one out of those three to have an important role in the rotation for this upcoming season. Uh, with Nurse being said on media day that he expects to use Scotty Barnes in a very significant role for this upcoming season whether that is going to be in the starting lineup or not remains to be seen uh, but he's sure to get an important role uh, with the Lionel Batten and David Johnson more so being long-term pieces that will ride the bench uh, or we'll see some time in the G League. When you're talking about departures for this Toronto Raptors team you saw six guys that all played minutes for this team last year um, one being a lot more significant than the others of course in Kyle Lowry, uh, Aaron Baines being the disaster of a sign-in as he was last year uh, did not get brought back uh, hopefully he recovers well from his injuries he had a fairly serious injury down in the olympics uh, and so best luck with him and his recoveries deandre bembry of course went to the nets uh, paul watson has left ronnie hood went to the bucks uh, and stanley johnson went to chicago so a fairly active summer for the raptors as far as their movement goes in free agency and via trades uh, with of course the most notable loss being kyle lowry uh, but then getting scotty barnes in at the fourth overall pick and bringing in precious achua Resigning Kerry Trant, resigning Keem Birch, uh, and making a few nice depth additions as well. So when you're talking about this starting lineup for the upcoming season, it's going to be one of the best defensive units in the league, uh, and they have the potential to throw out some lineups that are extremely long, extremely switchable, uh, and could be arguably a top five defense in the league, if not at the very least a top ten defense in the league. You're talking about a team that will most likely feature Fred, Gary Trant, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Keem Birch. As the most likely starting lineup for this team but of course pascal siakam is going to miss at least roughly the first month of the nba season which then means that we're either going to see chris boucher or scotty barnes start in that power forward spot for a bit over a month i think it's probably going to be scotty barnes because i think that nick nurse is going to prefer to have chris boucher off of the bench that seems to be his preferred role for him uh, but that remains to be seen uh, either way, they're both going to be interchangeable. One of them will start, one of them will be the sixth man, uh, or vice versa. So they're both going to have very significant and important roles on this team moving forward. And as I mentioned, it's going to be a very good defensive group. Fred is a very underrated, but very good defensive point guard. Very active with his hands on ball or off ball. It's a very good man-on-man -man defender on the perimeter. Gary Trent's a very good on-ball defender. Uh, OG Ananobi is one of the top two, top three mono a mono wing defenders in the league he just locks guys up one-on-one -on -one. that's what he does and he does it with the best of them uh, pascal siakam is as impactful as it gets uh, in so many different areas on the defensive end he can guard on the perimeter he can guard inside give you a little bit of rim protection good rebounder good length good mobility uh, when he really shows that effort on the defensive end he's as good as it gets uh, the center spot keen birch is fine um it's not an elite defensive center by any stretch that's something this team doesn't have uh, but it's a type of lineup where you can have 
OG Pascal Keen Burch switch a bunch of things. Uh, if Precious gets on the court, if Scotty's on the if Scotty Barnes is on the court, you can have a lot of guys just switching things. And there's no reason why Toronto might not roll lineups at some point in time throughout the season that have Scotty Barnes at, at the point guard spot, and then OG, uh, Chris Boucher, Presses Achua, and Keem Birch, and they can just switch everything with everyone being between 6'7 and 6'9 with good mobility. And so the Toronto Raptors have a lot of options defensively in that way, and that's going to allow them to have one of the best defenses in the league moving into next season, one of the more versatile defenses in the league heading into next season. As far as the key bench players are going to go for this team, uh, it is a lot of new pieces uh, or a lot of young pieces. Of course, you're talking about potentially Scotty Barnes or Chris Boucher, whoever doesn't start. Uh, and then both of them likely being bench pieces once Pascal Siakam returns. Malachi Flynn is now going to be the main guard off of the bench, especially with Kyle Lowry now out. Gary Trent inserts himself into that starting lineup. And so Malachi's Flynn roll up. Flynn's role on this team is going to be that more important but with the flashes he showed towards the back end of last year I think he will very much be looking forward to and be ready for that role and can be a solid backup point guard as far as the shooting guard squats goes Sfimi Chalichuk was brought in on a two-year deal and he'll likely get most of the minutes at that spot and so the guard spot does look pretty good for the Raptors moving into this year especially with Goran Dragic uh, being available on the bench as well until he likely does get traded at some point in time throughout the season uh, so there's five solid guards for this Raptors team and Goran Dragic gives them a bit of veteran presence for Van Fleet's been around a lot now for the Raptors over the last few years in some pretty important moments uh, so there is a bit of leadership back there even with Kyle Lowry gone it's obviously not going to be anywhere near as good a guard play when Kyle Lowry was on the team but there still is some solid quality in that backcourt now, when you're starting to talk about the wings, and you're going to have Scotty Barnes coming off of the bench. You're going to have Isaac Bonga, who can come in and give you some defense and some left off of the bench. Uh, Ita Watanabe is still going to be fighting for a roster spot, but he could still see some minutes. Uh, giving a bit of 3 and D presence as well, as he had some really good moments last year, hitting down some very important threes uh, and giving a lot of good energy and effort on the defensive end. Uh, and then Precious Achua, I expect to be a very important part of this team as well this year. Uh, whether it be at the power forward spot or at the center spot. Uh, I think he was a very underrated pickup in the Kyle Lowry sign and trade. I think has a bright future in this league. Builds a lot of effort and energy on the defensive end. I think he'll continue to continue to put in work, be a better offensive player, but I think he has the upside to be a very uh, good, impactful player on the defensive end uh, with a bit of upside as well. You expect him to have an important role as well. Uh, and then it remains to be seen who else might get some minutes at the center spot. Uh, Chris Boucher could play there a little bit, but I expect him to primarily play at the power forward spot. Uh, Gillespie was just signed at the end of last year after being picked up on a 10-day contract. But ended up seeing a few minutes as well if he does end up sticking on the roster, although his G League play was highly questionable. Uh, and then Reggie Perry was also picked up in the last couple of weeks as well. So the center spot still remains the weakness for the Toronto Raptors. There's no doubt about that. Uh, that's probably the only thing that's keeping them from being a top five defense. Uh, no doubt about it. it. Is not having an elite center defensively. And Keen Birch isn't an amazing defense, uh, offensive center either. Uh, he's a definitely better than what they had last year. And he showed moments last year where he was definitely playing the ba best basketball of his NBA career. But most of that was with Kyle Lowry being the point guard setting him up. And so that remains to be seen how that fit goes with Fred Van Fleet, Malachi Flynn, and Goran Krajic being those guys that are doing the distributing for him. But I think there's still a lot to look forward to for this Toronto Raptors team. This isn't a team that's contending for titles anywhere near soon like they were a couple of years ago. Uh, but there's some nice young pieces on this team when you're talking about OG Ananobi still being in his early 20s. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. is still very young. Precious Achua is still young. Scotty Barnes now coming in. Uh, there's a lot of upside on this Toronto Raptors team. And it'll be interesting to see how they transition post Kyle Lowry era. As I mentioned, they're one of the hardest teams for me to evaluate heading into the next season when you're taking into account of the Siakam injury, the departure of Lowry, which is more than just the on-court effects, it's the off-court uh, influence of that as well. And then you have to evaluate how much did being in Tampa impact this team compared to now being back in Toronto, playing one, half of their games back home in front of fans, and also the likelihood that anyone that isn't vaccinated isn't going to be able to play in Toronto due to the government not allowing unvaccinated players to come to Canada which is just a little bit of a bonus home court advantage, which probably makes up for the lack of one they had last year anyways. So nonetheless, there's a whole bunch of variables to consider for this Toronto Raptors team. But personally, I do have them coming in in 10th for this upcoming season, two spots above where they finished last year, getting into the last wildcard spot, or playing spot, pardon me. 
but you could make an argument either way um, between essentially the three or four teams around them uh, that you'll see in future videos um, you could definitely make an argument pretty much from the eight seed to the 12 seed for me uh, that anyone could jump in or out of those playing spots uh, it's really only the Cavs, the Magic, and the Pistons for me in the Eastern Conference that I don't think really have too much of a shot at getting into the play-in games. Although you could make an argument for the Pistons, but personally, I don't think it's quite their year yet. Next year will be a different discussion. Uh, but the Raptors, I have currently sitting in 10th. You can make the argument up or down. Let me know down in the comment section where you guys think they'll end up finishing for this upcoming season. Uh, I know some people have had them a lot higher. Some people have had them a lot lower. Uh, so be sure to let me know. As I said, they're a very hard team to evaluate coming into this season. Uh, my MVP for this upcoming season for the Toronto Raptors is OG Ananobi. Uh, it would be Pascal Siakam, other than the fact that he's going to be missing over a month of the season. And so I think that's going to kind of rule him out of being an MVP of the team. And I think OG Ananobi is going to take a big step forward again this year, which is why I have him as the most improved player for the team. And I think Pascal Siakam or Scotty Barnes is going to be the X factor for this team. How well can Scotty Barnes adjust and how quickly and how effective is Pascal Siakam back in Toronto? Can he rebound from last year? Is his injury going to affect his play coming back? Just a few variables for him coming into this season, and hopefully he can have a nice bounce back here and push towards being an all-star again in this upcoming season. With that being said, that is my thoughts on the Toronto Raptors headed into next season. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section what you guys think, uh, what the role Scotty Barnes is going to have, uh, who you think is going to start between Scotty Barnes and Chris Boucher when Pascal Siakam is out, and just let me know how you think the season is going to go, because as I said, they are extremely hard to evaluate uh, so I'm curious to see what you guys have to say and what you guys think. That being said, uh, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'll be sure to continue the rest of these season previews as we head into the start of the NBA season over the next couple of weeks. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.